Hello and guten Tag from Lutsch Dahlhagel. In this clip I want to present you some gameplay footage and some historical backgrounds about the Tiger Tank. This Tiger Tank here actually was um, captured by the British in Tunisia and brought to the Bovington Tank Museum in England. So, this is the Panzerkampfwagen 6 Ausführung H, Tiger or Tiger Mark E as you can say as well. And this tank was designed or developed to, uh, as a reaction to T-34. The Germans encountered the T-34 on the Eastern Front and the Panzerkampfwagen 3 and 4 were unable to fight the T-34 effective. They had short barrels or low caliber guns and it was no match to the T-34's armor and gun. So development started and took only six months and the first combat activity from this tank uh, was in the region of Leningrad on the 16th September of 1942. The Tiger's main qualities, as you might guess, are the formidable armor protection and the devastating and very hard-hitting firepower. At this time, when this tank um, was released into duty, it was unmatched from every tank on the world. As the war progressed, the IS-2 and the Sherman Firefly could compete with the Tiger tank. Now let's have a look um, on the armor design. As you can see, it's a boxy design and here we have a front view. You can see it's like a 100 mm thick. Gives you round about 100 to 120 mm and the turret 110 mm to 140 mm of armor protection. So this tank is very well protected in the front and in the comparison to most tanks of the time it is very heavily armored. If you angle this tank in a 30 or 20 degree angle towards the enemy you are very well armored and quite immune to most of the guns that are facing your tank. If we have a look on the roof armor from the turret and the hull, you can see it's only 25 millimeters thick. So this was a very short viewed development of the German engineers because it made this tank very very vulnerable to air strafing runs or air attacks from like the Hawker Typhoon with rockets or the IL-2 even with the main guns. So as you might know that always take care or protect yourself if a plane is around. Let's have a look on the inner modules. If you're facing a Tiger head on, always try to uh, hit the left side of its turret because you can kill the uh, gunner and the commander in one shot. But it might not do full damage because you only have to rely on ricochets to um, hit critical modules like the ammunition load. If you want to kill a tiger in your first shot, you have to hit the whole side armor because on the whole side armor, as you might uh, see, there's the ammunition, ammunition stored. And if you only have the front, hit for the sides of the front armor because there is the ammunition as well and you can blow up a tiger tank. So let's do this in battle. Let's talk about some more about the main qualities of the Tiger tank. The Tiger's main quality was of course its armor. It was infamous for its strong armor. And um, a little example for that. A T-34 driver or a T-34 gunner had to hit the Tiger on the side armor at a range around 300 to 400 meters to get an effective hit on the Tiger, to actually penetrate the armor. On the front it was nearly immune, only some weak spots like the driver's hatch, but the side armor was the region or the place where the T-34 drivers with their 76mm guns had to place their shots to kill a Tiger. You can say the same or even worse about the American or British tanks. They only had 75mm guns with nearly the same or less penetration than the Russian guns, 
So all these tanks that the Tiger faced in its period, in its first period, nearly had to do insane maneuvers or had to rely on their high numbers to kill this tank. So it was very hard to beat a Tiger in an open battle. The only chance for the Allied tanks at this time was to outmaneuver a Tiger tank because it was not very maneuverable and to hit the side or the rear armor again and again to eventually crack the armor plate or to penetrate it and kill the crew or incinerate the ammunition load. As you might have seen in the footage, we were able to bounce a shell from the IOS-1, an 85mm shell, due to our angling towards the enemy. If you angle the armor from the Tiger right in a 20 to 30 degree angle, you can achieve like around about 120 to 125 millimeters of armor protection in the front and the sides. Your turret armor is very hard to penetrate for, uh, for these early 85mm guns because they only have around about an effective armor penetration of 120mm. Only the later ones, the ZIS guns, the ZIS 85mm guns, have a composite rigid round that can penetrate your turret armor effectively. On the other hand, with your 88mm gun, you can penetrate the T-34-85 up to 2000 meters on the hull and the IS-1's turret up to like 500 to 1000 meters. So that makes, that gives you a good armor protection and a lot of firepower and if you know how to use your armor and your devastating firepower, you will be not surprised by much on the battlefield. Talking about the gun and its devastating firepower, um, the gun was derived or developed from the 88mm anti-aircraft gun, the German Flak 18 or anti-aircraft gun 18, and Hitler itself ordered to produce or to develop the uh, main armament of um, the target tank out of this anti-aircraft gun. By this time, the Kampfwagenkanone 42 or KWK 42 from the later Panther tank was um, already finished in development and was ready for battle and would have been the better choice um, from many experts. The KWK 42 could carry because of its uh, smaller caliber and smaller rounds, could, would have been able to carry more rounds with it and the higher muzzle velocity um, gave it the quality to penetrate more armor um, so yeah it would have been the better choice nevertheless the experience the german army made with the kwk 36 um, the 88 millimeter gun derived from the experience on the battlefield from the eastern front so they relied on a gun that they already know and know its qualities so they redesigned the um, flag or the anti-aircraft cannon, cannon for uh, the usage in a tank and um, this gun the KWK 36 88mm L56 cannon was able to kill or to destroy a T-34-76 tank uh, up to a range about 2000 meters this gave the Tiger tank the opportunity or the quality to kill its main opponent, the T-34-76, up to a range about 2000 meters, a range where the T-34 can't even think about scratching or uh, hit, score, uh, striking or devastating hit on the Tiger tank. Additional to that, um, the gun was not only able to hit with brute force, it was able to um, hit uh, up to a distance to, to uh, 1200 meters with the first shot and up to 2000 meters um, an experienced gunner was able to hit the target uh, within the first four shots. This made this tank an excellent sniper and um, gave it good qualities as an attacker or in a defensive role. 
As I already mentioned, um, the first duty of or the first combat of the Tiger Tank was on the 16th September of 1942 in Leningrad. And after that, the next um, combat duty or the combat uh, experience for the Tiger Tank crews was in the January 1943. The next battle then took place in Tunisia in the North African battleground. And um, within the first appearance of the Tiger Tank, um, it was able to destroy 75 enemy British and American tanks with only one company of Tiger tanks in battle involved. Another and uh, even more successful battle took place in uh, the Eastern Front in Russia in the Battle of Charkov or Kharkov. Uh, I'll leave it up to you how you might uh, spell it. Within this huge tank battle, um, the tank division or the Panzer division, Gross Deutschland, um, was able to kill in a short period of time up to 250 Russian tanks. After that and especially in the Battle of Korsk it showed that um, the Tiger tank was more in a defensive role because um, the new Russian tanks, especially the T-3485 and the IS, was able to match the Tiger in uh, concerns of armor and especially firepower. So, yeah, you can say that um, the demise of the Tiger Tank um, began shortly after the Battle of Kursk and uh, the new Russian tank lines, especially the very hard-hitting IS-2 with its 122mm gun, was able to fight the Tiger effectively and at any distance. So that's enough for the historical background for um, so far, and um, I now want to refer to the gameplay footage here. As you have already seen, we were able to bounce quite a few shots from um, very big guns, the 85mm guns of the IS-1 or the T-34-85. And um, here you can see the excellent sniper capability of the Tiger tank. We were able to kill a uh, SU-152 uh, up to a distance, I would guess, around 1400 to 1600 meters with ease. And um, here you can see that the T-34, um, especially the hull armor, is no match against the Tiger tank. Here we hit the side armor of the T-34 and because of the, 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 sh the shell size and um, the brute force, the shell impacts on the target, it automatically explodes the ammunition load of the tank. And as you see, I tried to angle my armor towards the enemy at a, as I already said, at an angle around about 20 to 30 degrees, um, giving me the opportunity to, to bounce the shots they fired at me, because they fired great distance and um, their shell energy drops dramatically, so um, they will not be able to penetrate my armor at this distance and at this angle. Another good quality of the main gun is its shell trajectory and the shell energy. Um, due to the shell energy, um, the trajectory of which the um, shells are flying is not that steep. Um, so the shell will not drop that much automatically, like you would expect it from the Russian guns, the 85 or the 76mm guns. This quality gives us um, the opportunity to um, give good lead. You don't have to aim that much in the vertical and can concentrate on um, leading in the vertical, as you see here. There I rip off the um, tracks from the T-30-57 and then don't have to give that much much um, vertical lead and um, giving me the opportunity to kill um, this tank in the first three shots. In this last part of the gameplay footage, 
um, all qualities of the Tiger tank are really summed up together. The good ones and the bad ones. I already mentioned the good ones. The good ones are for sure the armor of this tank. It has around about 100 millimeters up to 140 millimeters in the front, especially on the turret. And if you angle your tank very well, you will be able to um, create effective armor up to 120 to 140 millimeters of armor. The other good quality is of course the main gun. As I mentioned it, if you are able to hit your enemy in the hull or the turret, like the hull of the T-34 or the turret of the IS-1, you will be able to um, kill them instantly because the shell has a lot of energy and it will devastate the interior of the enemy tanks. I rarely see an enemy surviving my first shot. On the other hand, the main backdraft of the Tiger tank was it was too heavy for the engine and the gear. And because of that it was very unagile. And in during the combat or in, in battles it has very much mechanical problems. This mechanical problems um, were so heavy or so bad that more Tigers were lost to, uh, to problems with the gear or the, the engine or the suspension um, than in real battle. Here's a perfect example of um, the unagile tiger. So um, a T-34 tried to or was able to get around me and I was just unable to get my gun pointed in his, his direction because slow. And as you see it results in the destruction of my tank. So that was it for my historical background and my gameplay footage. Um, you can say the Tiger was unmatched until 1943 when the first models of the IS series um, saw duty. I hope you enjoyed it and um, do your best on the battlefield. See ya!